top NBA fantasy basketball players and breakout players to draft. Starting with score. Oh, he just shook the gravity right AKA up. points per game. If we take a look at the top 10 list from last year, I feel like most of the players are pretty safe picks to finish near the top once again. But in terms of risk, I think you have to be a little bit careful with a player like Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Kevin Durant, and not draft them on too many of your fantasy teams. For one, they are getting up there in age, and two, they play on some pretty stacked basketball teams. Steph Curry now has Chris Paul to run point for him in Golden State. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant has Bradley Beal and Devin Booker in Phoenix, so he can take nights off if he wants to. And despite being relatively healthy for most of his NBA career, LeBron has only averaged 55 games in each of his last five seasons. And compared to others in the top 10, the stats tell us that LeBron is one of those players with the best chance to get load managed and miss a handful of games throughout the season, since he is almost pushing 40 years old. So if LeBron does decide to miss games at the wrong time, it might actually cost some of your team some really close weeks in your fantasy leagues. If I had a choice out of everyone in the top 10 from last year, I would say Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Giannis, and Jason Tatum as the safer choices to draft for elite scoring numbers. All of them played a good amount of games over the past few years, and it's much more needed by their team to produce every single night. In terms of players with upside to break into the top 10 in scoring, I feel like a player like Jalen Brown of the Boston Celtics might be ready. He was actually ranked 13th in the entire NBA last year, averaging 26.6 points per game. But we can't forget that Brown is already a pretty high usage player and one of the Celtics' main offensive options. So for example, if someone like Tatum goes down or elects to take on more of a playmaking role, then it is very possible that we see Brown scoring numbers go up. Let's say he averages around 28 to 30 points per game, then statistically this would put him somewhere in the top 10 in scoring in the NBA. Laurie Markkinen, Utah Jazz. He might be another potential riser to keep an eye on for scoring. He finished top 18 in the NBA in terms of points per game last year with a career high of 25.6 points. And heading into this year, he is in a wonderful fantasy situation in Utah without any major stars on his team. So you can almost bet that Markkinen should get plenty of opportunities to eat. As a bonus, he is still kind of young at 26, so there is still runway for him to improve and take his game to the next level for at least the next two years. If you want to mop the floor with every single other fantasy team in your league and annihilate everyone badly every single week, all you have to do is just subscribe. Trust me and do it within the next three seconds. I wouldn't risk it. Anthony Edwards Minnesota Timberwolves. He might be another potential riser slash breakout player to watch out for in the scoring category. He averaged 24.6 points per game last year and was a top 25 scorer in the NBA. But ask around the NBA circle and many can agree that he still has plenty of untapped potential. At only 22 years old, he has already improved offensively for three straight seasons. And the crazy thing is, he might still be a few years away from his true prime. So in short, I wouldn't be surprised to see any one of Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brown, or Laurie Markkinen take that big step forward and finish in the top 10 in scoring as early as this season. In terms of bounce back players to target for scoring, this one is a little bit controversial, but I still feel like Zion Williamson might be a sleeper. Yes, injuries and health is always a concern, so he might actually be a high risk, high reward type of draft pick. But Zion already has a career average of 25.8 points per game and was a top 20 player in this category last year and the season before that. When healthy, Zion is one of those guys who can casually give you 20 to 25 points per game on an average night. And with a career average of almost 26 points per game, the stats tells us that Zion will always be a good to elite scorer in the NBA as long as he can stay healthy. Another potential sleeper slash dark horse candidate to watch out for in scoring is Pascal Siakam of the Toronto Raptors. 
overall a very reliable fantasy scorer who is likely to have to take on an even bigger role with former teammate Fred Van Fleet now gone to the Houston Rockets. Surprisingly, Siakam is already coming off a career-high 24.2 points per game, but with things opening up in the lineup, it is very possible that he could average 2-3 to three more points per game and finish next season as a 26-27 to 27 points per game scorer. Going further down the list, Jordan Poole of the Washington Wizards might be another breakout scorer to watch out for in your fantasy drafts. Traded to a very good fantasy situation in Washington this summer, he is going to get a very good opportunity to take all the shots he can handle. He only averaged 20.4 points per game last year, mostly coming off the bench in Golden State. But in Washington, it's going to be a totally different story. He is going to be one of their main guys and be one of their featured guards on their offense. So with added minutes and more shots to take up, 20.4 points might be pretty easy for him to beat. But beware that he might be one of the more overrated players in some of your fantasy drafts, because I could see a lot of people try to reach for him. Triples. Unlike points per game, I think this category is actually a little bit harder to predict as new players and non-all-stars emerge as elite fantasy three-point shooters every year. If we look at the stats from last year, Klay Thompson led the way along with Buddy Heald and Steph Curry. But also notice how a name like Malik Beasley actually slipped into the top 10. And compared to other names like Dame Lillard, Jason Tatum, and Steph Curry, Beasley is definitely a much lower ranked overall fantasy basketball player. So in my opinion, it's not smart to reach for a 3 point specialist too early in your drafts as you will get plenty of opportunities to find them much later. Out of everyone in the top 10 from last year, the stats tell us that Steph Curry, Buddy Heal, Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum would be the safest picks. Because not only can they knock down threes at an elite level, they are also able to provide you with above average stats in other categories such as assists, steals and points. In terms of biggest risers for triples, uh, I would probably go after someone like Anthony Edwards, who actually finished 10th in triples last year, knocking down a total of 213 and averaging 2.7 triples per game. But like I said before, he is only getting better and might still be a few years away from his prime. Another young player to look out for is Keegan Murray of the Sacramento Kings. He finished in top 15 in three points made as an NBA rookie and appeared in 80 games out of 82. It is still early, but it looks like he is going to be a pretty durable player. And having a player that can show up every night and give you an extra two or three triples is very, very important. Fred Van Fleet of the Houston Rockets might be another bounce back player to watch in this category. He missed some games last year, but still managed to finish 14th overall. With a brand new massive contract in Houston and a whole off season to recover, he might bounce back in a big way and make his way back into the top 10 for triples. A few more younger players to watch out for in this category are Trey Murphy the third of the New Orleans Pelicans, Jalen Green of the Houston Rockets and Kevin Herter of the Sacramento Kings. All relatively younger players who appear to be figuring things out in the NBA and should continue to trend up fantasy wise for the next few years. So drafting them this season might be a good time to catch one of these guys on the way up, especially in dynasty and long-term keeper leagues. Now, if last year's stats gives us any indication, it is also very rare to see a power forward or center in the top 20 or even top 30 in triples made. In fact, only Julius Randle and Laurie Markkinen finished in the top 20. So if triples are important to you, then you don't really want to pass up on too many bigs especially for those who can average over 1.5 triples per game. As the stats show, there aren't that many out there. Steals. This is another super rare fantasy basketball category that usually dries up really quick in a lot of your drafts. Only eight players in the entire NBA average more than 1.6 steals per game or more last year. So if you had any of those top tier guys on your roster, they might have single-handedly won you the steal category in a lot of close weeks. But notice how you can't really get the best of both worlds with high steal guys. Cause out of everyone in the top 10 last year, you can argue that none of those guys are worthy of using a first round pick on in most standard fantasy leagues. 
they have their deficiencies in their fantasy game whether it is the lack of scoring assists rebounds or some major fantasy category also if you go further down the list and look at the top 20 from last year you'll notice that a lot of high steel guys are not must roster players for example depending on the size of your league and the build of your team names like dante divincenzo alex caruso or jalen williams might actually be left on waivers even though they were top 20 players in steals last year as a result, this makes drafting a guy like Luka Doncic, DeJounte Murray, Donovan Mitchell, Anthony Edwards, or Shea Gilgis Alexander that much more valuable. Because not only can they get you elite numbers in steals, they are also above average contributors in other major fantasy categories like scoring, assists, and triples. As a general rule of thumb, if you want to build a competitive team in steals, then the stats tell us that a player who averages at least 1.5 steals a game or more is actually worth looking at to add to your roster since there were only about 15 of those guys in the entire NBA last year. So having one or two of them on your roster might be good enough to help you win that category every single week. Rebounds The stats show this is another dying fantasy category. As we're seeing less and less traditional bigs in the NBA today, Many elite rebound specialists are becoming more rare to find in fantasy basketball. Only 6 players in the entire NBA averaged more than 10 rebounds per game last year. And notice how all of them were natural power forwards or centers. Looking back at the past few years, I actually found that players like Rudy Gobert, Clint Capella, Joel Embiid, and DeMontis Sabonis consistently always seem to be somewhere at the top of the list for rebounding, usually somewhere in the top 8 to the top 4 in this category. Unlike triples, steals, or scoring, now this category doesn't change that much year over year and is actually a bit easier to predict. Every season, very very few new faces break into the top 10 for this category. Also notice how every player in the top 10 for rebounding is actually quite established in the NBA as well. You don't really see rookies or even second year players put up elite rebounding numbers. If I had to pick 3 of the biggest potential risers from last year to look out for in your NBA fantasy leagues this year, it might be Nick Claxton of the Brooklyn Nets, Alperon Shingun of the Houston Rockets, and Evan Mobley of the Cleveland Cavaliers. All finished in the top 20 last year, set new career highs in boards, and is just scratching the surface in their NBA career. Going further down the list, two even younger players who impressed me last year was Jalen Duran of the Detroit Pistons and Walker Kessler of the Utah Jazz. Both rookies last year finished in the top 30 in rebounds and have already carved out an important role on their teams. Usually by year 2-3 to three, we see massive fantasy improvements from these types of players. So both Kessler and Duran will more than likely trend up in this category for the next few seasons. It's also very hard to find smaller guards or primary ball handlers who can give you elite rebound numbers. A few of the best in this category includes Jason Tatum, Luka Doncic, Josh Giddy, and Josh Hart. Perhaps the most unique and surprising player is Josh Hart. He is only listed at 6'4", but actually averaged almost 8 rebounds per game last year, finished in the top 30 in rebounds, and averaged more rebounds per game than legit bigs like Miles Turner, Christian Wood, and Jaron Jackson Jr. Assists Another super important but rare fantasy basketball category that usually dries up super fast in drafts. So if you don't draft any high assist guys with any of your early to mid round picks, it will be very very hard to be competitive in this category. The stats tell us that it's almost impossible to find any great to elite assist guys on waivers, especially later in the season. If we take a look at last year's top 10 list with players who played a minimum of 58 games, only 2 players in the league averaged more than 10 assists per game. And only 6 players in the entire NBA averaged 8 or more assists. The stats definitely don't lie, if you somehow manage to grab 2 or 3 elite assist guys from the top 20, chances are your team might be able to mop the floor with everyone in your league throughout the season in the assist category. Once again, guys like Trey Young, James Harden, Jokic, Chris Paul, Ja Morant, and Luka Doncic are all very good picks if you want to chase assists. As long as they stay healthy and are not dealing with any other crazy off-court issues, they have consistently given owners elite assist numbers. 
many would agree that Jokic might be in a class of his own, as he was the only true big in fantasy basketball who also gave owners top 10 assist numbers. As we go out of the top 10, we can definitely see the quality of fantasy players significantly drop here. Out of everyone outside the top 10, I think a guy like Trey Jones, Josh Giddy, or maybe even Killian Hayes has a shot to surprise some people and possibly break into the top 10 this year. A few bounce back candidates to keep in mind in this category might include LaMelo Ball of the Charlotte Hornets, Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks, who both had somewhat of a drop off year in this category last year. Three risers with potential breakout in this category and set new career highs in the sister season could include Jordan Poole of the Washington Wizards, Scotty Barnes of the Toronto Raptors, Ant Edwards of the Minnesota Timberwolves and Jaden Ivey of the Detroit Pistons. All finished just outside of the top 30 in assists last year, but is expected to improve and earn a bigger playmaking role on their teams this upcoming season. Blocks Another rare fantasy basketball category that is super limited in most leagues. Only 3 players in the entire NBA who played at least 58 games averaged 2.5 blocks or more last year. And get this. Only 5 players in the entire league average over 2 blocks per game. So even having one top 10 player in this category could make a huge difference in turning your team from an average blocking team to a very good one. Out of everyone in the top 5, Miles Turner and Jaron Jackson Jr. has been most consistent over the past season. Meanwhile Lopez is getting up there in age and Claxton and Kessler are still super young so we might need a little bit more sample size to see if they can remain as top 5 block guys for the next few years. Looking further down the list, two players who should continue to improve and have a shot to move into the top 5 are Evan Mobley and Isaiah Jackson. So if you play in a long term keeper league and want younger players with upside for blocks, those two might be your best bet. Moving down to the 11 to 20 range, now Rudy Gobert is another name to watch out for. He has dominated this category for almost a decade and was consistently a top 5 player until last year. So to me it was a little bit surprising to see his name drop off so much last year. But he is in his 30s so either we are starting to see his decline or last year was just a one off. But if you're willing to take some risks, Rudy Gobert might be a huge bounce back guy for you. Another potential bounce back player we can't forget about is Robert Williams III of the Boston Celtics. Due to injuries, he was only limited to 35 games last year, but he does have a career average of 1.7 blocks per game. So as long as he can stay healthy, I wouldn't be surprised to see him shoot right back up to top 5 or even top 10 this season. Two other very special players to target for blocks are Shea Gilgis Alexander of the OKC Thunder and Derek White. They were the only two guards who averaged at least 0.9 blocks per game and played a minimum of 58 games last year. So having SGA or Derek White on your roster is somewhat of a cheat code for blocks. And you might be able to get away with drafting average blocking bigs in this category, as those two guys have the ability to pick up some slack for you during close weeks. Do you agree with everything I said in this video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to watch more of my crappy videos, then subscribe.